Welcome everyone to this tutorial on how to set up a version control using Git in your Unreal Engine project. Now, version control, and sometimes referred to as revision control, is a very useful tool whether you're using blueprints or writing C++ code. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to cover how to set up Git to be able to track your changes, version your project, back up your project to GitHub, and use the Git history to go back to previous versions of your project. Now, make sure to stick around till the end where I show you a basic workflow with Git and how to access your Git history. Now, let's get started. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna download Git for Windows and choose your right operating system architecture. I'm gonna leave a link for this in the description. Now, once you've downloaded Git and went through the setup, you will also have Git Bash installed, uh, which is a Windows terminal, Windows Bash terminal. Um, and you can write git dash dash version just to ensure that git is installed. And I'm gonna show you later on some git commands that we can use uh, with our Unreal projects uh, later in this tutorial. Um, but you can close this for now. And now next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a blank Unreal Engine project. Um, and I'm not gonna use starter content or anything else. I'm just gonna rename it git tutorial. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna set up git from within the Unreal Engine editor. Now, once you open up your Unreal Engine project, you'll see on the bottom right here something that says Revision Control. Now, click this and click on Connect to Revision Control. And here we're going to choose Git as our provider. And note that it's in beta version, uh, but that's fine. It still works perfectly uh, well for me. And here it's going to ask you where the uh, install, uh, where you installed Git. And then uh, for everything else, um, add a git ignore file. A git ignore file tells git which files are not part of the repository, so it ignores them and doesn't track them. And uh, add a readme file. A readme is just a description of um, your project. I'm gonna say something like, uh, this is a tutorial for git, something like that. And I'm not going to enable git LFS. Now git LFS stands for git large file system. Uh, which enables, is actually a more performant version of Git uh, because it deals with uh, large files by references instead of um, just uh, comparing uh, binary files every time you do a Git command. And now this is especially useful when you have lots of animations and, uh, and lots of static assets. Uh, but the problem is with Git LFS, you only get one gigabyte for free um, on GitHub and then you have to pay. Uh, so I'm not going to enable it, and this gives me um, uh, a larger size repository. Um, and for the initial commit, just check uh, make initial git commit, and you can name this anything. After you're done, click on initialize project with git, and then it's going to tell you that everything was successful, and then you can accept uh, the settings. Now that we have git connected, let me show you what you can do with it. So first thing, I'm just gonna create a new map here. So I'm gonna go over here, new level. I'm gonna just use a basic level. And I'm gonna save this, Control S to save. I'm gonna create a new folder, call it Maps. And I'm gonna put this demo map inside. So we have our Maps folder here. Now I'm also gonna create a new Blueprint class of type character. And I'm just gonna call this uh, BP underscore player. And I'm gonna save this as well. Now you'll notice here that there's a plus icon next to uh, this file. And also in the map, there's a plus icon. That means it's not um, yet committed. It's added to Git, it's scheduled. And you see here it says item is scheduled for addition, but it's not yet committed. So if I go down to revision control and I click on submit content, it's gonna show me that you have two files here uh, that are changed, or sorry, that are recently added because they have a plus icon next to them, and they're ready to be committed. Now, a commit basically is just saving your files to Git, uh, so you can um, uh, yeah make sure that if anything happens, they're backed up. So I'm just going to say something like uh, added a demo and player. This is the commit message, the message of what I've changed in this uh, edition, and I'm just going to click on submit. So now, if I go over here and I click on submit content again. It's gonna say that uh, there's uh, nothing um, to be checked in. All the assets are already submitted. And if I open this, the plus icon is now gone. Now, the really cool thing about Git, and this is the thing you're gonna use most often or about any version control, is if I open up this BP player, for example, 
and I make a change in the event graph. Let me just, um, I don't know, print something here. Now, if I save this, you'll see here that there's a check icon. That means that this file has changes that are ready to be committed. And if I go back to revision control and submit content, sure enough, it tells me that the BP player file has changed. And if I double click this, it's gonna actually show me everything that's changed in this file. So if I go over to the event graph, it's gonna tell me uh, this was before the change and this was after the change. So you can track exactly what changed uh, from your last commit. So it's very handy. And it even tells you a nice description here, added a link to then added a node print screen. Great. So then if I close this up and I say, I don't know, updated player, and if I submit it, then my commit is saved. And now I want to show you how to connect your local Git repository, which stores all your files, to GitHub, uh, which is a cloud-based Git solution to store your repositories. That way you can back them up uh, as you work so that if anything happens to your file on your computer, you can always access it from GitHub again. Now to set up a GitHub repository, go to github.com and uh, on the left here, click on new in your repositories, or just go to github.com slash new and then create a repository name. Here I'm gonna call it Git Tutorial. And you can choose to make it public or private. Uh, I'm just gonna keep it as public, it's fine. Um, and then it's gonna ask you if you wanna add a readme, say no because we already have a readme and don't add a git ignore and just click on create repository. Now what this will do now is it will give you a link to the remote repository and it a name that's called origin. That's just the name of the repository uh, that exists on GitHub. So what you wanna do is um, there are two ways you can uh, set up a remote repository, either using HTTPS or using SSH. The difference is using HTTPS, you have to authenticate or log in every time you pull or push to this repository. Or using SSH, you set up a private key uh, on GitHub so that you're always authenticated through your terminal. Now I'm gonna show you both ways. Um, HTTPS is easier, uh, but you need to log in every time. SSH has a bit more steps, but uh, will save you a lot of time down the road. So let's start with the easy one. Let's start with uh, HTTPS. So I'm just gonna copy this, git remote add origin. You can ignore all of the other things because this is setting up a repository, which we have already done. So all I need is this one, git remote add origin. And now we're gonna use our git bash terminal. So I'm gonna open up git bash. And I'm going to cd to the directory where my um, file is, where my Unreal Engine project is. All right, now that you're here, you'll see that this tells you master. And if you say git status, it shows you that this is a git repository and you're on a branch called master. Now I'm not gonna go too deep into git because I can talk about it for days, uh, but I just wanna show you uh, a basic understanding of how to set it up. So now if I paste this, oh, sorry, I didn't copy it. If I copy this and I paste it and I click add. Now, if I, uh, now I've added a link to this repository and I linked it to my local repository. So if I do something like git push origin master, now git push means upload, basically, and origin is the name of the um, remote repository, which is on GitHub, and master is the name of the branch that I'm pushing. So I'm saying everything that's on the master branch, upload it to the GitHub repository. And I'm just gonna press enter, now, because I'm already logged in, it didn't ask me to log in, but for you, you're probably gonna get a pop-up window asking you to authenticate through uh, the browser, and that's fine. Just log in through GitHub on the browser and you should be done. Now, if I go back to my GitHub repository and I refresh, I see that it has all of my content. This is the readme file that I added through the Unreal Engine editor, and these are all my files. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to set up the SSH method, which doesn't require login every time. So if you click on this, you'll see that this is the URL for the HTTPS repository, and this is a URL for the SSH repository. So I'm gonna copy this SSH repository, and I'm gonna go back to my git bash, and I'm gonna type the command git remote remove origin. 
This removes the old remote URL, which was the HTTPS one, because I'm gonna add a new one, which is the SSH one. And I'm gonna type the command git remote add origin and paste the uh, URL of the SSH one. So this is the same thing that we did in the beginning, but now we just change the URL. So now if I type the command git push origin master, it's gonna give me access denied because I don't have uh, a public key stored uh, that could authenticate me. So we need to generate that. Now, this is the command to generate an SSH key. And make I'm gonna leave the command in the description, but make sure to replace this with your email, of course, and then uh, press enter. Uh, it's gonna ask you where you want to store it. Um, I'm just gonna yeah, keep this uh, uh, location. I already have one it's, uh, because I created before. It's asked me, do I want to override it? I'll say yes. Do I want the password? I'm just gonna leave it empty, same password, empty. And there we go. Now it generated a private key in this location and generated a public key. Now the private key is private, never show it to anyone. And the public key is what we're going to be uploading to GitHub to uh, always have it authenticated. So I'm gonna copy this path and I'm gonna write the command cat. And this command just reads uh, from a file and outputs it to a terminal. And this is my public key. Now I'm gonna copy this, and now we want to upload it to GitHub to uh, always have ourselves authenticated. So back to GitHub, click on your user profile and go to settings. And under SSH and GPG keys, click on new SSH key. Um, give it a name, uh, like uh, uh, my PC, something like that. And then just paste in your SSH public key and click on add. Great. Now, if I go back to the terminal and I try to push again, git push origin master, this time it didn't give me an error, just said everything's up to date. If you recall before, it gave me a permission denied error. So that means that we're authenticated and everything is fine. All right, now that we have git set up, we have GitHub uh, remote repository set up, let me show you a workflow, how you should integrate this in your day-to-day -day work. So, uh, of course, uh, you're gonna, be making changes uh, in your Unreal Engine project. Uh, let's say I make some change here, add a custom event, call it do something, and then I'm gonna, I don't know, get my character movement component and set movement mode to flying, falling, whatever. So here I made a change, right? So you're gonna be making a lot of changes um, and when you're ready, when your change is ready to be committed, as in you have something functioning uh, and the uh, uh, you tested it, then you go to your revision control, click on submit changes and make sure that the things that you've changed are actually here, uh, review them, make sure that uh, everything looks good. It's like, yeah, this is indeed what I've changed and um, I'm happy with my changes you're gonna write a commit message, added custom event, do something, and you're gonna commit your changes. Now, when you go back to your git bash and you write git status, uh, this shows you that everything is committed and nothing has changed. Now, if I, I don't know, change something here by adding another custom event, and I go back and I say git status, oh, I didn't save. If I save first, and then I go back here and I write git status, it tells me that I have changes that aren't committed. So you can of course commit them uh, by submitting content, or you can also write the command, let me make some space here, or you can write the command uh, git commit dash am. Am stands for add and message. So usually you have to add your changes and then commit them. This does them together. Uh, and then you write your message here, uh, made some changes. And this is basically what submit content does. It does a git commit dash am. And now if I write git status, everything is fine. And once you're done with, and you're happy with your commits, you say git push origin master, and then everything will be uploaded to GitHub. And that's basically your normal git workflow. Now, if you're working with multiple people on the same project, you can be pushing something, they can be pushing something. So you should always uh, run git pull origin master, if you're all working on the same branch, um, git pull will update your, your branch with any changes that happened on the remote repository. 
So for example, if um, I just add a file here in my remote repository, obviously that's not the way that um, someone will be doing it, but let's say someone added a file um, um, on their own uh, machine, and this is some, I don't know, text file, and then they committed the changes. So now there's something on GitHub on my remote repository that I don't have on my local repository. So I should always first do a git pull or git pull origin master. And here you can see it downloaded this blah.txt file for me. And now I'm ready to push my changes. If you try to push without pulling first, it's going to give you an error. But let me remove this blah.txt and I can and I can say git commit dash am removed blah.txt and then I can push again. Perfect. Now, if I go back to my remote repository and refresh, the blah.txt file is removed, which is good because we don't want that. Now, another really cool thing, and this also you will find yourself doing a lot with Git, is that you can go back in time in your history to see how your project looked like at a specific point in time. So I'm going to write git log, which will give me a log of all the different commit messages, uh, starting from the initial commit to now. And let's say I want to see what the uh, what my project looked like at this point in time, uh, when I added the demo and player, but I didn't update the player or do anything else. Now, I can just copy this commit number and say git, let me just make some space and say git check out and paste this commit number. Now it's going to tell me that head, which is currently where my local repository is pointing, is at this commit message. And now here it no longer says master like it did before, it gives me this commit number. And if I go back here to uh, my uh, uh, editor, now the thing is with blueprints is uh, you might not find the change in the blueprint immediately. Uh, you often have to restart Unreal Engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so now I restarted Unreal Engine and if I open up my BP player, as you can see, it doesn't have the print statement. It doesn't have the do something custom event, doesn't have anything because now I am on a previous version of, um, of uh, this uh, project. And when you want to go back to master, just type git checkout master and make sure you haven't made any changes here. And now it says that uh, your previous position was this and now you're back on master. And if I restart the engine and now open up my BP player and here are all my changes again. So this is a great way to go back to a previous commit message and see what was the state of your game at that point in time. All right, now we just set up Git. I showed you a basic Git workflow and there's a ton more things you can do with Git. Um, I didn't even go into branching, which is very important when you're working with multiple people on the same project, uh, but I'm gonna leave that for you to research. Uh, for now, I just want you to use Git, whether it's a solo project or working in a team to back up your code to GitHub, to make sure that you're versioning your code as you go along. Um, and just make sure that you're always making the changes you expect and nothing goes wrong. And if you found this tutorial useful, please consider giving a like and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.